Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Welcome in. Ah! I liked it. It's a special week, Jason. It sure is. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast Tuesday, September 5th. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Very excited to be with you this fine morning, afternoon, whenever you're listening. Football is this week. Very soon. Very soon. And I find soon. myself, dare I say, excited. Really? At the prospect of football starting. The, wow. Just the prospect. Just the prospect. It. Okay. Which has been there for a while. But no, Thursday. That's also known as the day after tomorrow. Mm, the day going. after tomorrow, we have real football that matters that will score us points in fantasy. Everyone undefeated right now. That will not be the case after the weekend, but uh, we're there. And a lot's going on. We had our league of record draft. I was going to say, we're, everyone is technically undefeated, but Jason and I, after the draft, we may already be 0-1. Yeah, yeah, we're, you know, uh, I'm, I, Once my goal upon a time, is to not finish in last place this year. <laughs> Once upon a time, some men sold their souls yeah. for a playoff run, something I mm -hmm. respect mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, encourage. But the picks that you had yesterday in our League of Record draft, yeah. yep. I mean, this was at one point in the draft, and I, I, I love this because there's so much to share from this League of Record draft, and the Rapscallion is going to be sharing a bunch of video and images from our, our draft because they are worth it. But my favorite part, I think, was when Jason had multiple consecutive picks really late that were clearly just – players that would only be great if injuries to their major stars happened in front of them Yeah, because he, he, he was grasping at a way to piece this roster together beyond his keepers. I'm going to need a little bit of luck. <laughs> yeah, he filled out some insurance policies. So if you haven't heard us talk about the league of record, we can trade picks, and often that leads to teams who are making a playoff run. People decide if they're in or they're out, and you swipe those credit cards, and – I mean, it's interest free for the, six months. Yeah, like it, it. It feels good until draft day when the creditors <laughs> show oh, up yeah. and start repossessing all of your stuff. Uh, we are a three keeper league, so I, I have my three keepers, which are good. Which yeah, they're they're good, and everyone has their first rounder. But before my second pick could be made, Kyle and I. Which shout out to Kyle the Borgogan is in town. Yeah, he's in the building. Deucer's he, Alley. He today. flew in for the draft. Uh, before our second pick pick could be made Raheem Mostert was already drafted that's that's how dire the situation was for my running back room where you know, it was just like well I guess I'm, I'm not gonna draft any running backs now now Jason I need to say this and this is what will be shared on social Jason is the defending champion yes and along with so Jason did win the draft he sold his soul and was rewarded with uh with the championship a, a bounty in this life and uh, he has a co-manager, Andy Schneider, who works for us. And Jason went full John Hammond at this draft. I mean, there we we showed up at the studio, and I didn't know any of this stuff. I mean, I knew he had spent some money. But there's a flag yes. hanging in the parking lot pointing to where the draft is with these <laughs> pictures of him and the, and the winner uh, the, in championship jerseys. There's a balloon arch mm. go, that we all had to walk through to get into the studio where a... Had to duck had because to, yeah. it was the, once the sign was hung under the balloons, it was low clearance. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it was horrible. And then you walk into the draft room where a banner that was bigger than the... I mean, almost bigger than the wall here. It barely fit on the... I mean, the it's a 15-foot ceiling in there, I think. And that was 15 feet of banner, and it's just... It's Both beautiful. of their faces up on it. 
the, he brought cupcakes that we all had to make the decision. Do we eat these delicious <laughs> cupcakes that are colored in the team colors mm -hmm. for his stupid championship team that say eat it on top of the cupcake? Mm -hmm. And you think it's over. And then halfway through the draft, <laughs> you get a ring at the doorbell. We're in the fifth, sixth, seventh round. And in walks Marilyn Monroe, the singing <laughs> telegram, who sings a championship birthday mm -hmm. song yeah. to the champions. I was, it was a shocking moment. I don't know <laughs> how she showed up. It was like, what is Marilyn Monroe doing here? But yes, you can sing to me. I am the champion. And so, yeah, we, we got all that on tape. And um, so he enjoyed that part, not the picks. No, the picks were few and far between. <laughs> Mike and I had the same <laughs> second pick. And then after that, I had to wait three more rounds for my third pick. So, um, yeah, my team is uh, it's going to be a little tough this year. But it doesn't matter because I got the ring on the finger. Mike, did you get the ring? No. No, that's no. worse. No, I did not. Uh, I will say this. Al Borland had a great draft. He had, yeah. he had those picks. He had picks. Yeah. When, when I said people decide if they're in, they're out. He decided he was out. Last year. Yes. So and he's he in did, now. Yeah, he's in now. Um, and, yeah, it was, it was a good time. Hopefully, I mean, I know a lot of you drafted over the weekend. Hope your drafts went well. We've seen the rosters flying through on socials at the FF Ballers. The Megalobowl drafts have started, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I've seen a bunch of those rosters as well. Hopefully you enjoyed, if you've already had it, you've enjoyed those drafts. We have drafts today and tomorrow. So if you are not in the Megalobowl, mm -hmm. which is the largest season-long tournament, uh, you, you get placed in a draft in a 12-team league. We keep track of the standings as a whole. We put them on the website at megalobowl.com. And you track along during the year. And then there is a tournament style finish to the season where, you know, from weeks 15, 16, 17, we eliminate half the playoff teams each week. And the winner gets a spot in our listener league and the title of Megalobowl champion. And you can still get in. Like I said, drafts today and tomorrow. You pick a spot, megalobowl.com. Jason is drafting today. I, oh, so I'm tomorrow. I literally yeah. was just like, I, oh, shoot, I, I drafted in 43 minutes. I am tomorrow morning. Oh, all right. So, oh, you said you wouldn't I say. Did. I did, but I felt like I had to share it. Yeah. So uh, that's going on. There's there's a lot going on right now. The draft was a blast, and we are into our quick question. What is your biggest fantasy fear heading into the 2023 season? So is this like get it out, like speak it right right now, so maybe it doesn't happen? Yeah. Uh, for me, it's it's a positive fear. Um, but I'm like. <laughs> I'm te I'm terrified. <laughs> well, it, this will make sense. I'm terrified that Brees Hall is going to be unbelievable. Just so good. Because he's always been my dude. I love Brees Hall so much, but because of the injury, I have kind of decided I didn't like where he was going in drafts. You decided he wasn't your guy anymore. No, don't you say don't you say that. That's what I heard all off season. No, how dare you? I love him so much. And thankfully I've got him in the in our main dynasty league if if he does well. But there's a part of me that just goes He's so good and so special that even though Dalvin Cook is there and even though he's coming off an ACL, he's got the talent to just Adrian Peterson this thing and come off of the ACL and be a dominant, great fantasy asset this year. But I do not have a ton of shares of Brees Hall across most of my leagues, my best ball leagues. Like I just didn't scoop him up enough, and I feel like I'm going to be punished for my, my lack of true love yeah, exactly. Um, Conviction, yeah. strength, yeah, um, those type, confidence. Those type of words. Those type of words. Cowardice. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so like, I, I, it makes it really hard so because I weird. want him to I succeed. Say that's a weird fear, fear because it's entirely. I mean, I guess it's a fantasy fear because you want to see him succeed. Yes, you want to see him succeed for other people that drafted him. Yes. But like I, you didn't get enough of him. Right. And then I'd be like, so you, you I, would. The, so what do you want to happen? I, I guess I actually do want him to succeed. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I, I think do it's want not him to succeed. So maybe it's not a fear, but I, I you just um, don't like how you're going to feel. I don't want to have been out on him. No, oh, this is I'm really afraid that I'm going to find a briefcase of a million dollars and I'm just I'm not going to know how to feel about it. Right. See, you well because it. he didn't put any deposit down on the briefcase. <laughs> it's going to someone else. Ridiculous. It's FOMO. Um, Mike, what do you got? I got. Oh, that, I like this. That uh, my boys in purple are gonna end up letting me down because I have backed Alexander Madison and I have backed J.K. Dobbins, J.K. Two L. Very, 
much this off season. I think that they're both going to be fantastic, huge opportunities. And uh, but this is this is the NFL. This is fantasy football. Things don't always go as you have seen. The probability hits the other side. Uh, so I'm still in, but that's like the biggest fear is those two guys are not who I hope and dream. And then purple pain. And then I am standing inside the restricted area and Andy just dunks. Oh man. Because, because I'm not, I, I can't draw the charge. Mm -mm. I mean, if, no if, foul. It, if it goes down for Madison, we are, I'm going to actually need to set up a dunk on you. <laughs> like I think so. Come, I think we'll have come to, get to my house. Or... I will sure. lower the hoop mm -hmm. a little bit. And I will dunk on your face. Yeah. Um, I would. I or will vice do, versa. Oh no! Boom I will. Shakalaka. I will do no such thing because I'll just say, yeah, expected. Breaking news. I don't know. It's just this isn't Alexander Madison. No, they, <laughs> <laughs> Alexander Madison torn ACL. The dunk, the dunk right now. No, I look. I I couldn't help but break this news. Al Borland. <laughs> um, uh, I just found out through Slack. You ate a beetle. <laughs> Almost. You drank, you drank, drank a, a beetle? beetle. Yeah. What happened back there? Well, Brooks was trying to cue me to change something on the back wall. I took a drink <laughs> of my LaCroix, and something didn't feel right. <laughs> oh, no. And I spat all over the desk, and there was a beetle in it. <laughs> <laughs> Just now? Just now. Yeah, yeah it's breaking news, man. Yeah, this, wow. this desk is wet over here. There's some water on the light board. So if the what? lights go out, that, that's why. How did a beetle get in the can? That's a quick beetle. I have no idea. Wow. <laughs> All right. Back to the fantasy fears. Gross. That's that's a real life fear. Yeah, that, that one is bad. Um I'll I'll throw this out there. Papa <laughs> Papa Josh. The exact same I'm, thought. My good. We're Mike, all checking Mike our drinks. Like, okay, are they, do my, we have a beetle problem? Put my hand over my cup. Um Papa Josh just said his biggest fear is that JT is out all season. No. Oh, well. Jonathan Taylor misses which it could happen. Yes. Um I put this down. It's a bit broader than specific players, but just the idea that, I don't know, I was thinking this morning, if all the top running backs let people down again in the first round, are we going to be entering a new age formally in fantasy football of the workhorse-less draft picks? Sure. I mean, are, are we going to be – like, I love taking the powerhouse running back. I still believe – and we'll always believe that is the most valuable position to yes. have because they're so scarce. But if you go a number of years where making that investment in the first round is not delivering the goods, I think it's going to change the dynamics of fantasy a little bit. And it is certainly possible that's the way that coaches have moved. The like, Look at the, the early round workhorse running backs. Besides Bijan, McCaffrey, he's getting old. Eckler, he's getting old. Derrick Henry is old. I mean – it's well, it's truly a conundrum for fantasy players. I just watched a um, it was some social media video of people at one of these fantasy football conferences recently, and they were taking polls of, of people of who the biggest bust is going to be this year. And it was like, you know, Derrick Henry, Austin right. Eckler, B. John Robinson. It was first-round running backs that people had doubts about, and it's going to change the game, especially if, like, what if Kelsey and Andrews deliver again? Yeah, you know how how high do those tight ends start to climb up, or like the three big quarterbacks? What if it's the same three this year? Hurts, Mahomes, Allen. Yeah, and they're actually they're going to climb up again if somehow they're six points better again than like the mid tier quarterbacks. It will be. It's going to be chaos. It'll be interesting. All right, let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. Sean McVay says he will have more information on Cooper Cup's hamstring injury and week one status on Wednesday. He was visiting a body specialist. That's cool. Uh, to better understand the hamstring what issue. Is, this is... Um, what degree is that? I'm not going to hit the panic alarm, but if we had like a, a slightly lower... You know how you go to like, uh, what is that? The DEFCON levels? Yes. Or I, I don't know, on, star, on, on the think, Enterprise, what I, is the right before red alert? Oh, is, that, I don't know. Orange, Talk to the nerd over here. Yellow alert? I don't know. <laughs> This does not have the right sound to it, is all I'm saying. What, body specialist? Well, you don't like your, your wide receivers going to a body specialist? We've been around this game long enough to know that this kind of this kind of language could mean a lot of things. I mean, this could be a player dealing with an injury for six, eight weeks or longer. It could be something 
wrong that is not being disclosed to us now beyond the hamstring. I am just very worried. And, and um, you know, last night we didn't have to draft Cooper Cup. He was a keeper for somebody. But what do you do here? Are you are you investing in, in Van Jefferson or, uh, you know, Puka Nakua or somebody? Or even Tyler Higby, who uh, we only yeah. had, we only saw one game where Stafford played and Cooper Cup didn't, but he had eight targets in that game. Um, this is a big problem. It really, really sucks. And this is also why the later you can draft in fantasy, the better, because, you know, I was in the middle of a draft where I had already taken Cooper Cup um, in a slow draft, and then it was like, oh, he had a setback. And when you have a setback on a hamstring at that age – it is not going to be a quick recovery. It's going to be a month. He will miss more time than we want, and then you just you just pray when he's back that it, that he can stay healthy at that point. And honestly, if you draft Cooper Cup, you want him out. You do not want him rushing right. back. You, it's okay to have him miss a month. He is valuable enough to be a a good pick. Like for instance, if you guys knew for sure he's going to play. 13 games this season he's he'll be healthy from week five on but he's going to be injured the first month where would you draft him probably back of the second i was thinking second round that was my first yeah, thought. Sec second round because yeah. once he's back i mean if you knew he was going to be healthy course, and we don't the know hardest that part is 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 he back back or right. is he half back and so at that that's where he's he's lower than that because you don't have a guarantee that he's going to be back and 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 healthy but um certainly will I'm, he'll change the landscape of fantasy he's, by himself. He's the highest risk reward player now in the draft. Agreed. Um, all signs point to Joe Burrow playing in week one, according to ne NFL Network's Ian Rappaport. All right. Shane Steichen said the team would use a running back by committee approach to start the season with JT on the pup. Don't care. <laughs> Deion Jackson, what? Zach Moss, Evan Hull. So was they're, that they're, they're working out James Robinson right now. Moss is likely – out for week one if you remember, recall he did uh he had a broken arm but he will be back i mean week one there are there's definitely some league scenarios like deeper leagues where or deeper starting formats where Deion jackson is worth the pick i would think as long as zach moss is out Deion jackson is the first man up here but the overall i mean even once zach moss is back even with the addition of evan hull who's a tremendous uh pass catching running back this seems like a disaster that probably only ends up at clogging your bench. George Kittle. Oh, man. Ah! Did this. not practice on Monday. Groin injury. This is not great. Here we go again. So monitor George Kittle. That's just like I'm what not, you should do every week for the last three years. Yeah. I mean, we, we've already kind of expressed because of just how George Kittle it works for fantasy that – He's not a great draft pick right in the middle rounds. He's not someone we're targeting, and this makes him basically off my draft board. But does this do anything? You know, we, we talk all offseason about there's a lot of mouths to feed with Ayuk, with Debo, Christian McCaffrey. That was the that was the argument against George Kittle. Sure. But if George Kittle is gone, I he mean your your MVPs. Um, but but like week one, right out the gates, I mean you could see really big games for for Debo and, and Ayuk. All my teams with Debo would be pleased. Because <laughs> it's still a little scary because of the, the multiple targets there. But you're right. Um, John Harbaugh said Mark Andrews will resume practicing on Wednesday. He had missed a bunch. A lot. With an undisclosed. It's it's ominous. Don't like it, but as long as he's back practicing. Yeah, nobody had ever told Mark Andrews what the problem was. <laughs> they just kept, just kept saying, Mark, don't, don't practice. Yeah. Why? We're not going to tell you. Just yeah. don't. Don't. You're, like you're hurting. Yeah. But we're not going to tell you where. <laughs> but is if it he, my knee? But if he practices, don't ask again. If he's practicing on Wednesday, I mean, it should be no problem. He was your first pick in the draft. He was. Uh, Devon A. Chain returned to practice. Dolphins running back. It's very interesting. They're beat up right now. Jeff Wilson's not going to be playing for the first four weeks. You've got Chris Brooks getting. Picked up in Dynasty Leagues because Salvin Ahmed is hurt as well. Uh, Chris Brooks beat out Miles Gaskin, who was cut. But, yeah, it's Mostert and it's Mostert and H.A. Yeah. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash 
insurance. Quick break, and we'll be back with the waiver wire. I have I have something to admit before we jump into the segment, which okay. is I did eat the cupcake. Yeah, oh. everyone ate the not cupcake. True. No, you not didn't eat a, the cupcake. I ate half the cupcake. Oh, okay, well and, that's eating some. And of the Kyle cupcake. ate none of the cupcake. Kyle, I would never. Oh, good man, good for you. I would never have eaten that cupcake if someone else brought me a cupcake. Cupcake that said "Eat it from the champ." I would take that cupcake and, and I would throw it in the garbage. Jason, my you are lying in front of thousands of people right no, now. No, I, I genuinely would never, ever have eaten that cupcake. That's, that's... if it was a donut. <laughs> okay. okay, all right, all right. I mean, like okay. I got limits. So this it's a cupcake. Yeah, it's situation. a cupcake problem. <laughs> I uh, it's just the cupcake. Good, it's not good principle. To know. Um, I my, will be bringing donuts for my, my toe manager. Would not eat it in your presence, but he did take it home. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, all right, here we go. <laughs> Welcome to the Waiver Wire, presented by NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. All right, uh, we are one week away from a Waiver Wire segment with recommended pickups. But this week, we are going to be talking about undrafted gems mm -hmm. that you can pick up off the Waiver Wire. I plugged in all of our rosters last night in our League of Record. And uh, look, I'm going to be browsing. Yeah, I mean, and making that, sure that I, you know, I don't have a better swap, or sometimes you go grab a player that's on IR and you throw them on your, uh, on your IR, and then go pick up a player again. Every single league that you're in that you have already done your draft, you need to go and look at the waiver wire. I know there's claims already in on the league of record. News changes, things happen. Players are missed in drafts where you just you you didn't think about. This player, I I remember when when you drafted Kyler last night. I I was just like. Oh yeah, Kyler was an option to draft. You know that just that happens, and so um, take a look and see if some of these guys we're going to recommend are out on your waivers, and if they're better than someone you drafted, or like Andy said, if you were to have already grabbed someone that you could throw on your IR and need to pick someone up, we got some recommendations. So let's go ahead and uh, share some undrafted gems, and then we'll we'll toss in some George Kittle tight end pivots if you need some starts to start the year in case he misses time. Jason. Yeah, so I'm going to throw out Marvin Mims. Um, yeah, I like it. If you drafted in the last week, he might have been drafted. He's he's risen uh, significantly very recently. Denver Broncos rookie De wide Denver receiver. Denver Broncos rookie wide receiver. Uh, the first pick of Sean Payton in the Broncos era. This is a player who I loved. Um, his production profile is great. Yes. Loved his talent, his film before the NFL draft. And I loved that he was drafted really high. He was a round two pick. He was the 63rd pick off the board, and he went to Sean Payton. The problem was it was clogged. You had Cortland Sutton he's not going to play ahead of. You had uh, Jerry Judy he's not going to play ahead of. And you had Tim Patrick he's probably not going to play ahead of to start his rookie year. Well, Tim Patrick is gone, and Jerry Judy is gone. And if Jerry Judy doesn't play to start the year, if that doesn't happen, that's vacating seven targets just himself alone, and you've got Marvin Mims now in a situation where he's in on two wide receiver sets. He is a talented rookie who is going to have to be on the field, even if he hasn't like earned his way yet. It's going to happen. And so, you know, you 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 look at these other great wide receivers. My 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 guy, Jordan Addison. Jordan Addison might not have as much run on the field week one as Marvin Mims. And so I think if he's out there on waiver wires, I would pick him up over uh, several guys. And you start the year against uh, the Las Vegas Raiders, it's, so he could he could get off to a quick start. And yeah, unfortunately, it, I do have to start him week one. <laughs> I'm not like I don't think you want to throw him in, but you can, and I have to. Good rookie wide receivers don't really give the job back, especially when they're picked by that regime. Like. If he does make an impact early, mm -hmm. you know that's the opportunity you're hoping for for these guys. Uh, so I think it's a good uh, it's a good player to be paying attention to. I've got one that'll gross you out. Yeah, it will, <laughs> and it does. Um, it'll make you throw up any beetles you were eating. <laughs> it'll make you a little <laughs> bit older. Yes, <laughs> Adam Thielen. Oh, did someone say my name? <laughs> 
I'm very hard of hearing because I'm so old. Yes, we know what that means, what? Mike. <laughs> old people just proclaiming how old they are. I love it. Um, I'm almost 40. <laughs> I think Adam Thielen will be the highest scoring undrafted wide receiver in week one. He did not go in our draft last night. Um, good, good for us. Jonathan Mingo went. <laughs> Ahead of him, it was that's right. It was in consideration for my final pick before Mike's undrafted Jim fell to me, but he's going to have six plus targets a week. Uh, he's going to be the top target for Bryce Young to start the year. Players of his caliber, veterans, they are very helpful for young quarterbacks. And I think while the season may not progress in a way that you're happy with Adam Thielen, I think you could steal some starts in the beginning of the year. In fact. A good example would be like, you know, the Marvin Mims versus Adam Thielen week one would be a pretty tough pick for me. Sure. I, you know, Adam Thielen is going to get opportunities in this offense. He looked good in the preseason. He scored. That's what he's been doing his whole career. I think Adam Thielen against Atlanta to start the year, at, you know, Seattle week three, Minnesota week four. You've got three or four weeks. I'm really excited about that schedule. And, um, it is a worthy name to bring up, and I do think that when Adam Thielen has success, he will have some success this year. It will be earlier in the season. Um, you know, might get off to a hot start, and then his body will clearly break down. Yeah, that that was going to be my point. Of he just, we've seen veterans of his age start hot because because he's Fitz healthy. Gerald right. used to do it at yes. the very, very end of his uh, career. He had a high target, high reception start to the season. But then the he kind of faded away. Yeah, the grind of the NFL season was. I got to look much. up his age again. He's I mean, thirty-three, I, and he is. <laughs> he's thirty-three <laughs> years. He's 33. <laughs> um, and he signed a three-year, twenty-five million dollar deal. Yeah. Well, good. So do, you, do you like for Frank Wright? You. Do you like him? Do you think he's a good coach? I do. Hmm. Okay. Why? I don't know. Like it, it, he you just a, made a whole diatribe about Marvin Mims being the first edition of the era of Sean Payton and Frank Reich made the choice to go out and get Adam Thielen as the one of the first moves of his era. That's oh, all. Uh, yeah, that's fine. But it, it, Sean Payton... Yours doesn't make sense. <laughs> Mine does. Well, no, Sean Payton is in control of that roster. Yeah. I don't think Frank Reich is. I Frank mean, Reich is going to have a, a significant have say on the acquisitions to start his tenure, including the quarterback that he had a considerable say in. But the, I think that's, that's also the harder point for Adam Thielen is, despite how bad Russ was last year, we're talking about a rookie in in these first four games. Maybe Bryce Young out the gate is just absolutely on fire. It's possible, but a rookie but or Russ? Of, that's a new yeah, a new no, game I, we should I, play. Yeah. I I totally get it. Uh, the name I want to throw out is Sean Tucker of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Great name to throw. He out. went completely undrafted because of a heart condition back in the scouting and the in the when when the dynasty passes. He loves just, too much. Yeah, I. Yes, he does. Yes. Uh, Sean Tucker is incredible. Like, based off of my grading rubric, uh, which, you know, I'm looking at production profile, everything, I think, I can't recall off the top of my head, but he was like my third or fourth favorite running back before the NFL draft happened. And that we didn't know the medical situation. And it was like, what is happening? How was Sean Tucker, who was such a boss in college, not getting drafted? Oh, okay. He has a heart condition. Well, he's on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a depth chart that is not solidified in the slightest. You have Rashad White, second-year player, who's, I think, and, and this is not anti-Rashad uh, uh, Rashad White. Rashad White is a good draft day value, but the question still remains, is Rashad White a good NFL player? I think there is a very strong chance that Sean Tucker is already a better player than Rashad White. So Sean Tucker, to me, is a running back you can get with your last pick who – may not need an injury. He may just, over the first couple of weeks, be better than Rashad White, and all of a sudden now Sean Tucker's the starting running back. There are backfields in which you would have to have an injury or something happen right. to give an opportunity to a younger player. And then there are backfields in which a younger player can take it. This feels like one that they can it take does. it. I think Kendra Miller in uh, sure. New mm -hmm. Orleans is a backfield where he could take it if he produced if better he, than those guys. Well, he's, he's excellent at recovering. But he's, from injury. Yeah, but he's excellent at getting injured, it seems. Mm. So that's the problem. But Quickly I, I, hurt, quickly back? Yes. Yeah, mm. I agree. Kendra Miller is in that situation, but he's also <laughs> hurt right now for his, his big opening audition. But Sean Tucker is is just he, – he's such a well-rounded 
running back who can do everything on the field, including the goal line, including catching the ball. So uh, while the Buccaneers may not be the greatest offense in the world, a player who can take a job is – it's not often that you get that chance that late in the draft. All right, what if you have George Kittle and you've already drafted him and you might not have him for a couple of weeks with this groin injury? Are you – what are some pivots for week one that are on the table? I mentioned him earlier, but my favorite pivot – who is undrafted in a lot of home leagues, is Tyler Higby. Tyler Higby is going to get off to a really strong, especially if you are in a PPR league. Um, you know, I, I don't think he's a uber-talented player, but I think he's the tight end that, that you could say, okay, he's going to have at least eight targets. And if I'm in a full PPR league, that's, that's in my He's as talented lineup. as Dalton Schultz. Yeah, I mean, and Dalton that's, Schultz was regularly relevant. Yeah, um... Turd Ferguson is <laughs> wait no no Turd no no Ferguson. no get, no it's Fergalicious. Jake, this is Jake Ferguson. Yeah, Jake Ferguson. Turd Ferguson. Get oh, out of no. here. It's a funny name. No, I might I might be in. It's a big hat. <laughs> it's a, yeah. I might be in on that. I mean, it's 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 a good name. But we're so we're what we're moving away from Ferguson. No, I think Fergalicious for good weeks. Turd Ferguson okay. for bad weeks. Yeah, That's like funny. like Hawkinson. Yeah. We had the hawk strap and Hocules. Yeah, this is important. That's to establish. <laughs> That's fine. We, we will see. Uh, Dak Prescott it's and a big hat. It does. <laughs> yeah. What, what do you want? What do you want? <laughs> you, you <laughs> He's bu- in. You bu- well, I, I love that bit. Yeah. Uh, Dak Prescott, his starting tight end, has always been solid for fantasy football. It does not matter who that player is, but Jake Ferguson might actually be a good player and a good player with great opportunity. Uh, so him and Sam Laporta of uh, the Detroit Lions, who is a rookie, so he, you can hold that against him, I get it. But over the first three weeks, the best opening schedule for tight ends, Sam Laporta and Jake Ferguson. Yeah, I think I think you can get by rolling Cole Komet out there, too, as, as an interim. If you don't want to throw a rookie out in week one like Musgrave and Laporta, I would just throw Cole Komet out there against okay. Green Bay, and you just got paid, and he'll get you a, he'll get you a few points. He's not – going to goose you probably uh yeah week one last year i'm pretty sure i mean you when you look at a the monsoon at a tight end with an, the ability to get into the end zone he was doing it later in the season he was um all right other things to keep yeah. an eye on stashing kyler murray in your yes. ir spot mm-hmm. yeah so i have done this way more than i thought i would captain team captain yeah kyler murray so it it the actions of the team have said that once Kyler Murray is healthy, he's going to go. When is that going to be? That part we do not know. He will miss uh, four games. He will miss a mandatory four games. Maybe he's ready to go week five or week six. But when Kyler Murray has been healthy on the football field, he has been an elite fantasy quarterback. I don't know if he can be an elite fantasy quarterback coming off of the ACL tear, but for someone that you – like. Very, very, very late in the draft, assuming you have an IR spot, just put him, take him with like your third to last pick, put him on your IR, and then now you just get to go on, pick up one of these waiver wire guys that we're talking about, and just sit back and wait. L- look at the recovery, how see how the Cardinals are talking about it. If he's ready to go week five, I mean, that could be an incredible value and a huge boost to your team. Yeah, if you've got an IR spot in your league, which hopefully you do, we always recommend having those. Um, picking up or drafting those type of players where you can get a free extra player. I'll throw Jeff Wilson's name out there as well, that maybe he went undrafted or got dropped when he went on to IR. Put him on your fantasy IR and stash him because we, we just talked about the Dolphins' backfield. Yeah, we don't is, know. It's, uh, it's an injured mess right now. So if, if Wilson is able to come back, he could be a, a strong value this year. It's wild because if, if Moster got hurt, in the first four weeks, Devon A. Chain will have a huge opportunity at the beginning of his career that we didn't see a month ago, potentially. Uh, out of uh, – here's a few names that went at the very, 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 very end of our draft last night, and I'll just throw them out there. Uh, Jalen Hyatt, rookie wide receiver yeah. uh, for the Giants. Jonathan Mingo went uh, towards the end, rookie wide receiver for the Panthers. Rashi Rice went – Rookie, wide receiver yeah, for the Chiefs. Roshan Johnson. Uh, you know, I, it might be debatable whether you think he could just take the job from Khalil Herbert. It's certainly possible. The draft possible. capital says he could. Uh, Higby went very late. Deshaun Watson was the 
third to last pick in the draft. Uh, it, it seemed like people were just avoiding him. Kirk Cousins was Mr. Irrelevant, the final pick in the draft. You're welcome, Kirk. I saved you. <clears throat> Mike picked him up. <laughs> All right, thanks again to our sponsor, NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. With NFL Sunday Ticket, it's never been easier to keep up with all your favorite fantasy players. For $50 off your subscription, sign up at youtube.com slash fantasy footballers. You ready, Mike? Let's go. Mailbag. Mailbag. Ooh, yeah. All right, if you have a question, we're here to help. That's what we do. We want you to win. I'm not talking to you, Jay. I don't want you to win. Well, yeah, I've already done it. Yeah, he so. well, he also took care of that not winning part. Uh, visit the website if you have a question and click the submit a question button. You can also dial our voicemail hotline 302-464-TFFB. I should mention the website, lots of articles coming your way every single week from our illustrious and uh dare I say beautiful writing staff. Yes. Uh, the waiver wire article every week, streaming quarterbacks, defenses, and kickers. The dynasty report, dynasty report coming every week. The DFS pass gets rolling. There's a lot going on. You'll want to check out. Our first question comes from Madison in Arizona. Hey ballers. Hey. It is because of your show that I have earned the respect of my husband and his friends when it comes to fantasy football. Saving marriages, guys. And now I have been invited into three different leagues. What is the best advice you have for managing multiple teams? Thank you. Love the show. Madison, multiple teams for Madison. Know your limits. That's the, yeah. because, you know, Mike's talked about this uh, recently, but when we first started, it was just we just kept going and adding more leagues and adding more leagues. And you get to a point where you lose the fun and it becomes a chore. And so – Waiver day, you're punching the clock. Yeah. Oh man, waiver day is always the like. <laughs> oh no, honey, I'm gonna need two hours uninterrupted. I've got to go through all my lineups and set all the waivers. Uh, so my recommendation would be just like add them slowly. You know, if if you were invited to three of them and one of them's really really exciting or two of them are really exciting, maybe start there and then and then work your way up. Um, and uh, you know that that's basically it for me. I find that about four leagues is my sweet spot number does it make a difference to you if you make a commitment to have some of the same players on every roster i was like, gonna say like i mean you have your players that you've you've rated a certain way that you like i mean i've got debo on a couple of important rosters um does that change the because to me the fun is being able to root for something if yes. i want too many teams beyond the work of waiver wire it's just like not knowing which player I want to do something, well, you know? Yeah, they, a lot of players, a lot of fantasy players, they have, want to have a whole bunch of teams because they want to diversify the, the players that they have so that, like, oh, I was able to get this player here because I wasn't able to get him there. I prefer to have – and look, it's it's all the eggs in one basket, so either things are fantastic or they're terrible. But for me, when I have all the players, then on a Sunday morning – Everything is simultaneously great and terrible at the exact same time. And then you get these scenarios where like, I need Justin Fields to score between 21 and 23 points or it's terrible. Yeah. So uh, it's just the way that I like fantasy football. I prefer to focus on, on my main leagues, but just, you know, have some auxiliary ones. I think Jason's right. Add, add one or two of them. See if it works out. And you go through Tuesdays and you're not hating your life. David in Boston. Boston. Should I drop Chiga Conquo for Tyler Higby? Full PPR. Yeah, you should. I was the last one to draft the tight end. So I, I would too. I mean, yep. I, I'd rather have Tyler Higby right now. I I have wondered recently when kind of looking at the later round tight ends if the Chiga Conquo reaction to the Hopkins signing was perhaps – too extreme and there there's probably still value that could be had there i mean it could Traylon burks has been dealing with injury we think he'll be back but a conquo wasn't good just from opportunity he was also good because he was an athletic um outlier and a wide receiver in a you know in a tight end's body like 
the plays that he made are the kinds of plays where you don't necessarily need to PPR your way there. Like you, you have two or three bigger plays down the field. That's what he was doing last year. And he was doing it with inconsistent quarterback play. So I do think that a uh, Conquo could be one of those guys that surprises early. That's just my opinion. Yeah. I, I, um, I think you're right from an athletic standpoint and an overreaction standpoint, but I don't think that his situation will allow him to be a weekly relevant, you know, to level up into like, oh, okay, he's breaking out into a, just a weekly starter. That's rare for any tight end, but in a low passing volume where you are now the guaranteed third target at best, um, I, I I still worry about that. So I, had, I would go with, especially if there's a full PPR yeah, league, I agree. then I would go Higby. He had a Conquo from week nine on. He had long, a long of 48, a long of 41, a long of 31, a long of 41, uh, a long of 28. So he had a lot of big plays. Mm -hmm. So you hope that they draw some of that up from him. And you're kind of rolling the dice if you play him and hoping you get a long touchdown. Um, Jack in Cincinnati, great question. Hey, ballers. In what scenarios should the league have the power to veto a trade? Uh, almost never. Uh, trades may look lopsided to you. Two people have agreed upon a trade, and as long as you have no reason to believe that, say, there's there is money on the line and two people have looked like they've made some sort of pact to improve one team to collusion to, to collude and financially benefit both of them, but is trades. We we've if you've been in fantasy football for any length of time, go back and look at the trades and the trades that you had a visceral reaction to of like what ah, you just you get real mad online. You start getting in the group chat like how did how do we possibly allow this to happen? Go back and look and be like oh I was apparently very wrong on that trade. Uh, so it's two people have agreed, let it happen. And it, the hard part of like proving collusion is so incredibly difficult unless unless you see a trade where it's like oh I just traded Josh Allen for uh, Tua yeah <laughs> sure just a one for one right. even I'm saying like like Jonathan Mingo a last pick of the draft goes for someone who goes in the first few rounds it's like just right after the draft right after the draft I mean you can spot something where. It smells bad just because you think it's. It's pretty obvious. It's, yeah, just because you think it is not fair or someone clearly won, that's no reason to veto trade. Or because you want to veto it because you don't want. You know, I don't want that team getting better. Get that crap out of here. That's proper nasty. Yeah, the proper reaction to that is to get angry. Just, yeah, hundred percent. Just, just yourself. You know, like <laughs> yeah, when you Jason, missed an opportunity. Just when Jason when Jason makes a great trade, I'm just like, dang it. Yeah, and you and you. But it's you, not you like get, I'm going to take that good trade from you. <laughs> you can get vocal, you know. You can, you yeah. can, you can, you can throw moke. a fit yeah. in that chat. I mean, throw it big. Uh, but yeah, you can't veto it. You can't just say I don't like this trade. Um, the only, you know, we've always said it's collusion and collusion only. What about, what about? Do you guys think that maybe protecting a new player, like someone, this is their first year playing? And they're just getting taken advantage of in a super lopsided trade. Would you think Those are that hard. is a situation where you're going? Ah, they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, to me, that the, the problem there is the issue is just with the it's with the person taking advantage of them. Obviously, you would hope that. I mean, what do you think, Mike? That's that's I, a really tough situation because if you invite somebody into the league, I think that's when the warning has to happen. Yes. You know, you bring them in and you have to say, "Hey, look." The you know the dogs are circling, um, and you probably need to be on your guard about these trades. You know, it gets hard there too because once one lopsided take advantage of someone trade happens, you know everybody pounces. All the hyenas come out of the woods, sure, and start taking their. They're like, Let, let's strip the roster yeah. to the bones. That's why you want to be first. <laughs> um, target. <laughs> the weak link in your league and get there first. Get the juiciest meat. And if you if you want to be not that guy, you could encourage that new person to maybe discuss the trade with somebody else that is not brand new. Yeah. And just say, hey, is this is this gonna be good for me? The hard part is is like Mike said, you know, a lot of trades look really good on the surface. So you need to leave a lot of room there. Agreed. 
Um, all right, week one start question. Might as well throw yeah. one out there. All right, it's the time. Uh, Jeremy in Texas, Aaron Rodgers or Geno Smith in week one? Ooh, I, I think it's Geno. I'm trying to remember the what's the Jets opening matchup. The Jets are the Bills. Yeah, that's that's not my favorite. Uh, I think I. Yeah, Gino, I believe has the Rams. Is that right? Yes, that yeah. is correct. I've, I'm going Gino, and it's I, at home. I'm going. So I, Gino. I think I'm taking Gino. Uh, I am going Gino. Rodgers is a tough pick because I think Rodgers is actually going to be pretty good for fantasy this year. But, but the first four to brutal. six weeks are pretty tough, and you know, you're not aiming for middle of the pack there to start your season. And um. I don't believe it is the Rams week one. I think it's the Chargers, the other L.A. team. Is, is that it? right? Did I say? Okay, so it's not the Rams? Gino plays the Rams. <laughs> really? Yeah. So, yeah. Would you care to apologize for what you just said? No, because I don't believe it. Okay, well, you can Google okay, it. So right I am Google. We, we literally it's, it's don't the, know who they're playing. It's the Seahawks at home against the Rams. Yeah, yeah, do, you, yeah, yeah. do you believe it now? I do. I do believe it now. <laughs> so wait, he doubled down. I did double down. Um, it's to to today is week one when we're when we full dive in. The website's getting changed yeah. over. Yeah, the Dolphins play the Chargers because that's why I took Tua. I was like, I was, over another play. I was in fact looking at Tua. <laughs> <So> <laughs> it's, the truth shall set you free. Okay, well that'll um, do it though. That's um, why. That's why you didn't believe it because it said it right in front of you for Tua. Uh, throw him in the mix. Tua Rogers or Geno Smith? I will take Tua. Yeah, I'll go Tua. All right. Uh, anything else we're forgetting here, Brooksy, before I shut things down? How, how's the judge doing today? Have you had any of your drafts? Doing great. Yeah, I did a bunch of best ball drafts over the past weekend when for, is, for the first time. When's your, uh, when's your, your home league? Your home league. This is also this past week. Uh, two weekends ago, actually. Oh, really? Whoa. Yeah. Oh, really? Any, uh, any feelings coming out of that draft? How do you feel? It went okay. Just mm. Leave it there. Doesn't yeah. sound great. Mm. Not the way Sounds you hope, like huh? Someone drafted Cooper Cup or something. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jonathan Taylor and Cooper Cup. Is that your? Oh, are they man. both on your roster? Oh. Maybe. Maybe. Oh. Um, all right. Tomorrow we have our first matchup breakdown of the season: the Detroit Kansas City game on the Wednesday episode, including a new segment. Thursday starts of the week and the matchup previews. Friday we got more matchups and the fantasy faceoff. Wow, it feels good to say all that. I can't wait for Thursday. Ah, football. All right. If you want to support the show, head over to Apple. Leave us a five-star review. Follow on Spotify or Apple. Talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.